Hey, what's up? Uh, so I wanted to talk about Verte Anaconda real quick. The basis for me coming across this was MBT's Twitter thread from earlier today. Uh, just talking about cards that have been banned or restricted for reasons beyond us. Uh, Shooting Riser Dragon, I think, is the poster child for this because this card was being run at a single copy at the time. It got restricted to one. It was serving a very particular purpose in the decks that were using it. It was usually something you'd go into off of Helk or like a Destrudo combo. So the fact it got hit was just strange. There wasn't really a lot of reason to run extra copies of this card in your deck in the first place. So yeah, it was pretty baffling, kind of befuddling definitely confounding and i think a lot of the examples that people bring up in the thread do fall into this category but i don't think that's the case for verte so she starts off by quoting one of the arguments against verte being that it limits future card design and i think it does do that to some degree and i'll talk about that in a moment but then she goes on to say it's been two years since verte's been and i'm not seeing a hypothetical happening yet so I think this is one issue I see come up when, when like the discussion of limiting design space comes up. I've seen a lot of people from time to time, like over the years, think that it's a question of a hypothetical, oh, like, will this card come out type of thing? It's not like, it really doesn't matter so much if a card that can be abused comes out. It's more a question of how does this fundamentally impact the overall landscape of the game? So my example going to be crimson dragon as per usual right crimson dragon like a number of other cards cheat stuff out but the way it does this matters it properly synchro summons the card this means if you want to summon something that has a must be synchro summon condition you can do that and i, I would say one big difference here is if you compare to excel stardust excel stardust specifically gets you into a regular stardust it treats it as properly synchro summon which i think is fair because if you remember starlight road you activate the starlight road you get the stardust out the stardust would potentially be able to negate something as well but if it did that it would just explode i think at the time that was fine because it presented an opportunity cost but consequently starlight road you know fell off as time went on for a number of reasons but now having a tool that can just properly summon the Stardust Dragon and allow you some leeway in how you choose to use it, I think is fair. But Crimson Dragon, on the other hand, goes into a lot of things it probably has no business going into. On top of that, it not only can target your own Synchro Monster for its tagging out effect, it can target the opponent's. I've seen people make Crimson Dragon against an opponent that is running some Synchro to cheat out like this Potter or something. It's kind of insane. I've also seen people uh, use talents under the mistaken assumption that uh, Crimson Dragon has to target their own monster. Uh, so they'd like take a Legatia just for the Legatia to get targeted and they're going into a Cosmic Blazer and they're like, huh? right? Like, it kind of sucks being honest with you fam. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I just wanted to talk about that. Like, it, it's really not a hypothetical. It's like, you can look at Dryden. There are instances where Dryden existing in the format is perfectly fine, if, but there oftentimes will eventually be a point at which Dryden is really, really egregious because a strategy will crop up where being able to have Dryden access makes that strategy very oppressive. I think MBT talked about this when some of the Zodiac stuff got freed in Master Duel. And I think the TCG being such a different beast from the OCG and even Master Duel because we don't have Max C makes these things matter considerably more. Like Branded Fusion can be at three for us because we don't have Max C, so our game isn't sitting on that particular axis. Like I completely understand Branded Fusion being at one because it's a very high impact summon potentially, right? So in the instances where you can't stop your opponent from doing the max c thing branded fusion was a way that allowed you to have a very strong early game right or just establish something and not worry too much about the resources that your opponent is getting access to whereas for us it's much less of an issue yeah so even at one in master duel and according to yugio pro deck data is seen in about as many decks on ladder as lava golem it's fair to bring master duel into question it's just when you do that, there are like little nuances that I think need to be taken into consideration as well, right? So like for Verte in particular, 
I think there's primarily two cards that we consider worthwhile summoning off of it, and that would be DPE or Dragoon. Dragoon just basically does not exist on Master Duel Ladder. That card is banned. Like, you couldn't even craft it at first. I don't know if you can even craft it now, actually. But, like, yeah, you can't make Dragoon. So, your targets for this are Dragoon or DPE. Okay. Well, if you make DPE, one aspect of going for DPE previously was you could kind of offset the investment cost by using Celestial. Well, Celestial's banned. So all you have access to is Denier, and there are some decks where Denier plus Malicious is really, really good, but a lot of them probably don't really want to run the three, you know, air quote, bricks of two Malicious and a Denier just for the Malicious extension and link capability, right? So I think it makes sense that Verte isn't being run. Like, Master Duel's landscape is such that you are playing in best of one, so while you might be inclined to run some more bricks for a variety of reasons, I also think it's entirely defensible that you don't want to run too many bricks so you end up opening just terrible hands while you're trying to ladder, right? Like, this is definitely one of those instances where the landscape has enough difference that it makes sense that this isn't being run in Master Duel, and that's not necessarily going to be the case in the TCG. Like, it's a bit extra, but imagine if this thing was free in the TCG right now. You'd potentially see people running this thing uh, in Voiceless just to guarantee the Sanctifier thing after they do all their regular stuff. You know, it's like, okay, as long as they have Low and Skull Guardian, if they can get rid of other bodies, like, what do they care? You know? It's an extra grind game thing that they can establish, and an extra thing that just puts them into a more advantageous position. But I think, like, the biggest thing with Verte is the fact that, like, if your opponent can... They have, like, the resources to try and play through multiple hand traps, they'll do that first, right? And then... Then, once you've exhausted your resources, interacting with them to the best of your ability, trying to make the best decisions you can, they decide, okay, I'm gonna make Verte, right? Like, even if you nib them, they could link off the token for a Link Spider, and if they have some way to put another body on board, or take yours by using, like, a Talents or something, like, okay, I make Verte. Deal with the DPE. Deal with the Dragoon. Like, I, I really don't think this is, uh... I, I, just, I just don't see this card being a healthy thing for the overall landscape of Yu-Gi-Oh! Maybe that can change, but yeah, I, I I don't know. This card really either does nothing, or it's really, really, really annoying. 